In this tutorial, we're going to be creating this menu. So as you can see, when you hover over it, we get uh, different turning to a different color. It gets a little bit less transparent. Um, got this nice background, which is quite easy to put in if you want some sort of background in your menu as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and learn how to do this today. All right, so let's go ahead and start off by creating our button. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this uh, lamp. And we're going to go ahead and use this cube as our button. So we're going to go ahead and scale this down, um, scale this out. And I'm going to go ahead and go control A, apply scale. Now, the reason you want to apply the scale is because if you don't apply scale, when we go control E and we bevel it, which we're going to be doing to make a kind of a, a nice cornered button. When we do this, um, bevel. You'll, you'll get strange things where this will be like all the way out here and this will be all the way out here because of the uh, the scale scaling issues. So you just want to go, make sure you apply scale or else you're going to get weird things. So I'm going to go ahead and hold Alt and then just uh, right click on this bottom edge and just delete vertices. So this is our button now. Now you could do this with a texture but uh, I'm fine with this. So let's go ahead and go Alt R and Alt G. Go into the camera and just go G, G Z and move it up. All right, so now we have a nice camera and we're going to go ahead and change this to shading GLSL and also textured. So let's come to our button and we can come over here and we could call this button. So we'll go. All right, so the, oh. All right, so here's our button. Let's make it shadeless, enable transparency. And we also want to go ahead and enable over here object color. So what it's going to do is it's going to allow the object color to basically be the color here. And what you see now is if you change object color here, the color of our material changes and we the reason we want that is we can animate this really easily and it will be on a per object basis now if we did it straight through the material when we played the animation on this or on the material in the logic all the buttons would get the same uh, animation going and playing uh, so when you hover over one button it would play the same animation on all the buttons at the same time which we don't want so by animating this color, it's going to just help us out a lot. And it's a really nice, easy way to do it. So let's go ahead and grab our button. And we're going to go ahead and uh, select a starting color. So I want a kind of a nice, uh, nice blue. So this is going to be our default color for our buttons. Um, select something you like. And we're also going to make it a bit transparent. So... 50%-ish yeah, would be good. And we also want to go ahead and change this to uh, blend again. Now, you can go ahead and press P to play the game while hovering over the viewport, or you can come here and click Start Game. Uh, I said viewport before. If, if I think I kind of mumbled that. But anyway, you can see it's showing up. So we also want our mouse to show up. So we can go ahead and come over here to Mouse Cursor and... In the future, in a little bit on this tutorial, I'll show you a different way to do this so that it actually works. Because uh, there is some problems when making a game uh, when you just have this enabled. So I'll go ahead and show you that later. But uh, we're going to keep on with this part. So let's go ahead and press P. So as you can see, we have a button showing up here. So let's go ahead and animate it. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to Animation. And I'm going to go Textured. And I'm going to go into the camera view. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and animate this. So we're going to come over to our object panel right here. Make sure we have this object selected. And we're going to click I, hovering over this. And that's going to animate that first frame. And I'm going to go to about the 10th frame. So you can just click and drag to the 10th frame. And we're going to go ahead and change this to more or less alpha. I think more alpha always looks a bit nicer. So I'm going to change this up to about 80, 
you know, about that, I don't know, 831, I mean, you could have it all precise and stuff, but can't really be bothered, so that should be fine, and I'm also going to change the colour to a, more of a, a baby blue, so now, you can see, yes, yeah, so now when we hover over it, it will come to this more uh, baby blue, ice blue, whatever, alright, so we also want to change this from the uh, dope sheet to an action editor and as you can see we have the name here so we could call this button over or whatever you want to call it so when we hover over it and we're also going to go ahead and come here and what you can do is you can hover over here and select A and we can go V and click vector if you'd like and it's going to make it more of a linear um, way of the animations going so it's going to go straight uh, from that color to that color. Uh, the other one, it kind of, if I undo that, it kind of eases in as you can see, and then it eases back out so you get a smoother thing. So it's really up to you. I'm gonna go with the more linear one. All right, so there we go. It's all, that's that part's all set up. So let's come back to the game logic. And we also need to go to texture view and into the camera. And now we can press play. And as you can see, it's showing up there. Um, but nothing's happening. So we're going to go ahead and add on this object, we're going to add a mouse and a mouse over. And then we're going to go action and we're going to go ahead and plug this in. Um, button over. That's one we're going to be playing. It's 10 frames. And now if we go ahead and hover over it, as you can see it's working, but then we're getting this strange thing here. So what is this? Um, we also want to go back to the first frame. So now as you can see, it's working, but as you can see, when we go over it again, it just gets this weird thing. So what we want to go ahead and do is change this to Flipper, I believe. And what you see is we hover over it and it turns to the color we want. We stop hovering over it and it reverses the animation. So that that's really quite nice. All right, so there we go. Mm -hmm. Let's close all of these. Alright, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is make this actually work uh, as a button. So we're going to add another mouse, and this is going to be mouse, left click, or whatever else you want, and this is mouse over. So we're going to add an and controller here, so if, if we are over this button and we click uh, if we click the left mouse button, what's going to go ahead and what's, what, it, what it's going to go ahead and do is it's going to send a pulse out here and we can make it do something. So we could say um, game and we could say quit game. And what this is going to do is now when we hover over it and click, it quits the game. Or we can go ahead and go scene, uh, set scene. And then we could set it to another scene, which is not this one. So we're going to create a new one. This can be called game. And we can go ahead and come back to our scene and select it, set this to game. All right, so now if we click this, as you can see, we go to the next scene, uh, but maybe you don't want the mouse showing up. So the way we can fix that is come over to our game scene. And in this scene, we're gonna add a uh, empty and we're gonna go ahead and add always and a, where is it? mouse and we're just going to uncheck visible and that's going to make it invisible when we come onto the scene so now make sure it's in blender game because each scene keeps its own presets for what it's in so you just has to be in blender game and uh gls out although whatever scene it comes from it will change that scene to that type but it's good practice to set into the right type so as you can see the mouse is not showing up anymore all right, and in this scene, we're going to go ahead and disable mouse cursor, and we're going to add an empty here as well. And it's going to be always a mouse and visible. Now, the reason for this is, let's say you have a game, and they come back to the menu, which is it could easily happen in a game. Uh, you might they might quit the game if the mouse is not showing up from the scene they're coming from. It's not going to show up in this scene. So if we go into our click on our game scene, we had a button here that took us back to this scene, there'd be no mouse showing up here. So this is basically a way to make sure that it 
that problem doesn't happen and the mouse is wherever we want it. So now you can see we can hover over it, we can click on it and the mouse disappears. And so you can have a whatever you like. Um, so there we go. So bef before we um, continue a little bit, uh, you don't want to just go ahead and duplicate these buttons. Now the reason for that is you're going to be wasting resources, it's going to make Blender load your game slower and this is very important if you have game assets. It's you can go ahead and do Alt D and what this is going to do is it's going to duplicate it but not the mesh. So this is the same mesh as this one and as you can see when they're edited they both uh, keep they both get edited at the same time which some people could think was annoying but now we're not wasting resources on another mesh and this is very useful so as you can see they still work perfectly fine because they're individual objects but you're not wasting resources and if this was like a character object or or like a really detailed I don't know lamp post or something for your game or a detailed car duplicating that is going to duplicate all of the vertex data and you do not want that in your game, so make sure you do Alt D. Or what I like to, what I think is a good thing, uh, if you want to fail safe, is come to User Preferences and then go to System. I believe it is. Um, no, Interface, uh, Editing. Yep, Editing. So you want to come down here, and where it says Duplicate Data, as you can see, we have all these different types you can change. Disable Mesh. Now what this is going to do is whenever you duplicate an object, it's not going to duplicate the mesh data. Now as you can see you can do it with text, so when you duplicate the text it's not going to duplicate the text with it and all these different things. Lamp, it's not going to make a, a, new, a new lamp data for that lamp and stuff and you can even enable it so it will duplicate and make a new, new material or even a new texture or a new particle system. Uh, but by disabling this mesh, it's going to allow us to, it's going to be a fail safe so that whenever we duplicate, if even if we don't do Alt D, it's going to, it's not going to create another mesh. So as you can see now, I can go Shift D and duplicate this and it hasn't created a new mesh, which is a really, uh, really good thing. So you want to make sure that you do that in your game, especially for bigger objects, because that's really going to slow down your game if you have lots of data you don't need. Uh, plus you can do a bit of edits to this button and it's going to change all the other ones which is can be quite useful so now you can see we have it so let's go ahead and add a text and let's move this up um, let's go ahead move it to about here so let's press play and as you can see now our text is showing up so let's go ahead and say start again And as you can see, that it's working. So as you can see, you have the text showing up now. And we can also come along here to our text object. And if you have a font, you can go ahead and just click on here and open up a font to use. Of course, you want to make sure it's a compatible font with uh, OpenGL and all that kind of stuff and with your game so you don't get in trouble with copyright or anything. But if you have a font you can use, you can just go ahead and open up right here. So, as you can see, we are using the classic Blender font and it works how we want. So let's go ahead and duplicate this down. And we could call this um, end game. Now you could have these more complicated, you could have them running Python modules and stuff, but this should be fine for what we want. Um, so the problem with a little bit of a problem, which I wish there'd be some way to fix it, I would love to have centered text in Blender, like um, down here you can see it can be centered, but in the Blender game engine it doesn't actually do that. Uh, but the scale is a bit off within the Blender game engine and with the text, which is it's strange, but just going to kind of do a bit of trial and error. And the nice thing is you don't really have much loading time so you can just come in here scale it move it and then just press p to play the game uh, so that looks good uh, so the way we can do this is we can go ahead and just uh, delete this logic brick and we can add a game quit game and we can plug that in and as you can see here it is working now and you can see this so let's go ahead and move these up 
All right, so how did I go ahead and get that background? Well, I used GIMP and I also used Pixabay. So what you want to go ahead and do is go on to pixabay.com, find the image you want, um, and I'll leave a link to the one I use if you want. And then you're going to go ahead and open it up in GIMP. All right, so I've gone ahead and got this great image of Pixabay, which is CC0, also known as public domain. And uh, so you can use this for really whatever you want, which is awesome. So what I went ahead and do, do is, what I hit, went ahead and did, is I went ahead and used a filter, blur, Gaussian, blur, and I did about 30. And you get this nice uh, background, you can see here, uh, nice blurred out background, which looks really great. Uh, it doesn't have to be blurred, you can do whatever else you want with it, but I think it'll be fine for what I want. Uh, if you want something different, go ahead, do whatever you like, uh, but this should be fine. So I'm going to go export, and I'm just going to replace that one I downloaded. So once you've got that, what you want to go ahead and do is go ahead and open it up in Blender. So the way you can do that is you can come over to the UV image editor. So let's switch this from uh, the text editor to UV image editor. And I'm going to add a plane, scale this up under it, scale it out, apply scale so everything works fine. That's control A and then apply scale. So now that we've done that, we can go U unwrap and then we're going to go ahead and open our image. So you can go ahead and just click open and navigate, navigate to where your folder is, click on it and then click open. All right, so now I have my image opened up in Blender here, as you can see. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, make sure this is done right. So there we go. So I just unwrapped it again and it made it correct because putting an image of different proportions can mess up your UVs, which is a little annoying. But anyway, what we wanna go ahead and do now is click new, uh, texture, shadeless, um, go new image or movie and then click on this browse image images to be linked and this will bring up all the images that are currently in the blend file so now what you can see is now we have some nice mountains in the background we have some nice buttons uh, but really if you can make this full screen you can have more buttons here and no save a load game and stuff but really I mean this probably could be a bit more transparent and these could be a bit smaller and you could also put a texture on here, but really it's it's quite good. Um, so someone might ask, how do you put a texture on here? So what you can go ahead and do is you can select our material here. And then you can go ahead and it's got some random texture for some odd reason, but I'm just going to delete that and we'll go new image or movie. And then you're going to go ahead and open some kind of image you have. All right, so here's my random image I made for a tutorial a while ago, but... Um, yeah, it should be fine. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go U and unwrap. Um, U, you just project, project from view. And we also want to select our this texture and we can scale it up. Now the problem with uh, um, making these the same mesh is they are going to have the same UVs. And I believe they might even share the yeah, they have the same the same uh, material, so you can't have different materials for these. But most of the time it's not going to be a problem. So as you can see now we have a, a material showing here. Um, if it wasn't transparent then you wouldn't have that problem. But if it if you kind of want it to be uh, mixed a different way, you can have screen overlay, multiply, divide, light and hue, saturation, value, color, soft light, linear light. I'm not sure what all of these do, but basically you have a lot of options here to make it show up. Uh, but there's your texture. Uh, so I'm sure you can improve on this, make cooler things. Maybe this, if you're going for like a water theme, you could have, uh, I don't know, some some kind of ocean image in the background and it looks really nice if you blur the image or you could actually have like a whole scene in the background like a 3d one it's really up to you uh but there we go there's how to make a scene in blender and uh sorry a menu in blender and i'm sure this could be used for a lot of the games and i've made some menus before but i thought i'd go ahead and redo the tutorial to create kind of a better looking menu so 
Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great week. And I will see you next week with another tutorial. Uh, and uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see that tutorial and many other tutorials coming in the future. Because I come up with a new tutorial every single week. Goodbye. No one's probably watching anymore.